So is resizable bar important to gaming performance? Well, it turns out it is. At least a little bit. But let's find out how much. Stay tuned. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Okay, I screwed up. I did a video a while back showing you how by simply updating your drivers, you can pretty dramatically increase your performance with an NVIDIA GPU. Now, one of the ways that the NVIDIA driver was tweaked to increase performance as much as it did was by increasing resizable bar support. I mentioned in that video itself, but what I failed to do was to check to see if resizable bar was actually enabled on my system, which it wasn't. So. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to check if resizable bar is enabled and we're going to look at what kind of performance increases we can get by actually enabling it this time. But before we get into that, let me explain to you what rebar is. Rebar is a technology based on the PCIe specification. It allows your CPU to access more of your GPU's memory at any particular time. Prior to the specification, the CPU was only allowed to access 256 megabytes of your GPU's memory. With modern games becoming more and more graphically intense and GPUs coming with more and more memory, limiting the CPU's access to GPU memory to 256 megs is pretty outdated. One thing that every game has in common is it displays a graphical image on the screen. Now, aside from the polygons that are being displayed, the graphical image on the screen is made up of textures and shaders. Now, these textures and shaders are what Resizable Bar was designed for. By limiting the CPU's access to GPU memory, it increases the amount of requests between the CPU and GPU. Now, by eliminating this limitation, you're allowing the CPU to address the GPU's memory all at once. The CPU has to do much less work to send textures and shaders to the GPU. Now, this sounds great, but there are some very specific requirements to make use of this tech. First off, you need a 400 or 500 series AMD motherboard with at least a 5th generation processor. Also, this works with 10th gen Intel and newer processors as well. The system also has to boot to a GDP partition, so you need a UEFI BIOS that has legacy support disabled. If for whatever reason your system is still booting to an MBR partition using legacy support, then I made a video that I'll tag right here that shows you how to convert to a GDP partition without losing any of your data. Now, with the platform requirements out of the way, you're also going to need at least a 30 series NVIDIA GPU. If you're using an AMD GPU, then you need at least a 6000 series Radeon card. However, from what I understand, AMD is going to be enabling this feature on older GPUs in the future. AMD markets this technology as smart access memory, but it's exactly the same thing as resizable bar. It's just using a different name. Ultimately though, AMD's implementation of this technology I think is much better than Nvidia's, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. Now that all that is out of the way, let's get to how to enable this on your system. Now I'm using an ASUS motherboard, so I'm going to show you how to enable this in the ASUS BIOS, but your system might be a little bit different, so you might have to refer to your motherboard manufacturer's documentation to find out how to enable it on your specific motherboard. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that we should do is check if resizable bar is enabled. And to do that, what you need to do is go ahead and launch the NVIDIA control panel. And from the NVIDIA control panel, you wanna go up into the help menu and just click on system information. 
It's gonna take a second to open that, but once it opens, you'll see right here, it says resizable bar, and it says no. So it's disabled on my system right now. But we need to find out why it's disabled, because there's a lot of requirements. So there could be several things stopping resizable bar from enabling. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and close the NVIDIA control panel, and we wanna open up a program called GPU-Z. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And once we open that, we can look right here into all the different specifications of our GPU. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, you can see right here where it says resizable bar and it says disabled. Now if you click on that, it'll give you this breakdown of all the different requirements and which things your system doesn't match. So in my case, I have above 4G decode enabled in BIOS, no. Resizable bar enabled in BIOS, no. And CSM, which is the compatibility support module, which gives you the legacy boot. That has to be disabled, and that's no also. So what we need to do now is we need to go into the BIOS and start changing some settings so we can get this thing enabled. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart my system real quick and get into the BIOS, and I'll meet you there. Okay, so now that I'm in the BIOS, on my system, it's just simply hitting delete during post to get me into the BIOS. Yours might be a little bit different, but that's pretty standard. So what we need to do is in the ASUS BIOS, we need to go to advanced mode. And from advanced mode, the first thing we're gonna do is disable the compatibility support module. This will disable our legacy boot. So we're gonna go over to our boot tab right here. And then from here, we wanna go right here where it says CSM, compatibility support module. Once we click on that, it has the launch CSM auto. So we wanna take this and turn it to disabled. Okay, now right here is gonna warn you about going to UEFI only. Go ahead and just hit okay to this warning. Like I said, you have to be using a GDP partition. I can't reiterate that enough. If you disable this and you're using MBR, you're gonna leave your system unbootable. So make sure to remember that and follow the link that I showed before and I'll go ahead and tag it here too. So if you need to convert to a GDP partition, you can. So the next thing we did, once we disable this, we need to go into the advanced tab. And then from the advanced tab, we want to scroll down to our PCI subsystem settings. And then from here, we want to make the above 4G decoding is enabled. So we click here, we go to enabled. And then right here, it gives us the option for resizable bar support. And then from there on an ASUS BIOS, you essentially are just setting this to auto, but auto is the equivalent of enabled. And then from that point, you go ahead and go to the exit menu right here, and you want to save changes and reset. And then from here, you want to hit OK to make sure these settings take effect. And at this point, your system will reboot into Windows, and I'll meet you there once it reboots. Okay, now we're back in Windows. There's two ways you can check if resizable bar is enabled. You can just open CPU-Z, or you can go to the NVIDIA control panel. So I'm going to do both right here. If you open up NVIDIA's control panel like you did before, then go up to Help, and then go to System Information. And then from the System Information tab, you can go see resizable bar is enabled. So looks like we took care of all the issues. And then if you don't want to use the NVIDIA control panel, you can still do it from CPU G as well. So if we open this up, just like before, go down to the bottom and we can see resizable bar is enabled. And if we click on that, it'll show us that all the different requirements have been met. So resizable bar is now enabled. Now that you have resizable bar enabled, that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be used in all your games. With an NVIDIA graphics card, there's one little caveat that you have to think about. And the GPU driver itself is what decides which games use resizable bar and which ones don't. And some games, you might get a performance boost and some games you might not. So NVIDIA has their different profiles for different games that have been told whether or not they're gonna use resizable bar or not. Let me show you how to modify that just in case you have a game that doesn't use resizable bar that you wanna try it out on. Let me show you. Okay, so what you're gonna need is a program called the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, and you can get this on GitHub. I go, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below to where you can download this. It's an open source program that you can use to be able to modify the different profiles within the NVIDIA drivers. So once you have that, what you need to do is go ahead and fire the program up, and as you can see, the program looks kind of intimidating. There's a lot of settings here that you can change, but it's okay, we're only concerned with three settings in here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is look for your specific game. I'm just gonna search for Cyberpunk. So if we go Cyberpunk here, we can click Cyberpunk 2077. And this here is the specific profile 
for Cyberpunk that the NVIDIA driver is going to apply to the GPU. So if we scroll down here, we wanna scroll all the way down to where it says common right here. And as you can see, we have the rebar feature enabled and it has the different options and whatnot enabled for it as well. Now this is the setting that we need to change with games that don't support resizable bar. And to do that, let me go find a game that actually doesn't support it. So for that, I'm gonna try Grand Theft Auto. So we're gonna to go to Grand Theft Auto 5. And then from here, we're gonna scroll down into the profile inspector until we get to the common section again. And as you can see right here, the rebar feature is disabled. Now, if you wanna force enable it for this game, what you need to do is change these three options right here. So we're gonna to go to the first one and we're gonna set it to simply enabled. Then we're gonna to go to the second one and we're gonna set the second one here to this very first setting right here. You can see the setting with all these different games listed right here. So click on that one, and then we're gonna go down to the size limit. And for the size limit, we're gonna set this one to the same thing, the very first setting that has all these different games listed right here. There are some other options right here that you could look into if you want, but these ones here I think are specifics for very specific games, like in this case, the Rift Breaker and Deathloop. So what we're gonna do is set it to the one that starts out with Battlefield 5. It may start out with that with you, it may not. But once you click that one, you select it, and that'll give you the three features. Now, the next thing that you have to do is make sure you go up to the top right here and click on Apply Changes. And this will apply these changes to this profile, so whenever you launch GTA 5, it will enable the rebar support. Now, if you ever decide that you wanna go back to defaults, it's really easy to do that too. And all you do is you go up to the top right here, you see the little NVIDIA logo right here, you just click on that and it'll throw everything back to the way it was default. So if you enable rebar and you find that it just doesn't work the way that you thought it should, or if you change any of these other settings from within the NVIDIA profiler, then go ahead and just click this and it'll restore the current default NVIDIA profile for that specific game. Okay, now that we have rebar enabled and working, we need to see what kind of improvement we get from it. So I'm gonna be going over the same games that I benchmarked in the NVIDIA driver video that I did before so we can kind of compare and contrast our results. Unfortunately though, it's been a while since I did that original video and I'm currently running a different driver than I was back when I filmed it. And all of these games have been updated since then. So we can't really use our results from the previous video anymore. So for this video, I tested all the same games on the same driver version with the only difference being resizable bar turned on or off. On several of these games, I had to force resizable bar on and for each game that I had to do that on, I'll specify that. The first game we're looking at today is Control. Without rebar, we got an average FPS of 107. Once enabling rebar, we got 109 FPS, giving us a 1.8% increase. Now with RTX enabled, we got 74 FPS, regardless of whether or not rebar was enabled or not. It quite literally made no difference at all. Once I enabled DLSS, we got 116.4 FPS without rebar and 120.2 with rebar. That's a 3.2% increase. That's actually pretty good for simply enabling a setting. Moving right along, the next game we tested was Cyberpunk 2077. With rebar disabled, we got 108.8 FPS. Once enabling it, we got 114.9 FPS. This gave us a 5.5% increase. Looking pretty good so far. With RTX on, we got 38.7 FPS without rebar and 40.2 FPS with rebar. That gave us a 3.8% increase. And with DLSS enabled, we got 71.7 .7 FPS with rebar disabled and 75.4 with rebar enabled. That gave us an increase of 5%. Next up is Red Dead Redemption 2. This one with rebar disabled, we got 65.9 FPS, but with rebar enabled, we got 65 FPS. This wasn't a huge loss, but it was still a loss of 1.4%. Once I enabled DLSS though, we got 77.9 FPS with rebar disabled and 78.3 FPS with rebar enabled. This was an improvement, but only by about a half a percent. The next game we're looking at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And this is the first game that I had to force rebar on. 
Without rebar, we got 69.3 FPS. And with rebar, we got 68.6 .6 FPS. Maybe this is why it had to be forced to be enabled in the first place, because we lost 1% by enabling it. With DLSS enabled, we got 98.9 .9 FPS with rebar disabled and 97.7 .7 FPS with rebar enabled. It's not looking good for rebar with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at a 1.2% decrease in performance after enabling DLSS. The next game we're looking at is Dirt Rally 2. This is another game that I had to force rebar to be on. With rebar disabled, we got 77.8 FPS. Once enabling rebar, we got 77.3. That's a loss of 0.6%. Kind of starting to see a pattern here. Moving right along, I went ahead and tested GTA 5. And this was another game I had to force rebar to be enabled. With rebar disabled, we got 118.7. Once enabling rebar, we got 117.9 FPS. That's another loss at 0.7%. So, did you guys notice the same pattern that I noticed? It seems as if NVIDIA is doing a pretty good job of qualifying which games should have rebar enabled and which ones shouldn't. In every game that I had to force rebar to be enabled, we lost performance. Now, this actually makes sense, and let me explain why. The 256 megabyte limit for CPU communicating with the GPU memory has been around since the beginning of PC gaming. So game publishers have designed their textures and shaders to fit within that 256 megabyte limit. So games themselves have been optimized to use that limit to their advantage. However, as graphically intense as games are getting, I don't think that's going to be the case for newer games down the road. So this technology is going to get more and more important as games get more and more visually stunning. I mean, if you think about it, it's going to be kind of hard smashing a 4K texture into a 256 megabyte file transfer. So the better games look in the future, the more important rebar is going to be. Furthermore, we didn't see a huge boost in performance even with games that are qualified by NVIDIA's drivers to use rebar. The reason why is because rebar helps lower CPU usage. It doesn't really help the GPU at all. Its purpose is to reduce the load on the CPU itself. So if you have a system like mine that's GPU bound, you're not going to see a huge boost in performance. But, you know, we did see some in Control and Cyberpunk. Another interesting side note that I noticed while doing these tests is several of these games have huge performance increases not related to any of this at all. Control and Cyberpunk specifically had a huge boost in performance. Based on my benchmark results from the last video, Control went from 80 FPS with DLSS to 128 FPS in the latest tests and Cyberpunk went from 80 FPS with DLSS and RTX turned off to 115 FPS in the latest tests. The only difference is the newest NVIDIA driver, which at the time of filming this video was 528.02 and updates to the games themselves. So as publishers update their games and GPU drivers get more optimized, we're getting free performance. So I think the biggest lesson from this video is to make sure that you keep your drivers and games updated because you might be leaving performance on the table if you don't. But with some closing notes, I don't think I can recommend forcing rebar to be enabled on games Nvidia hasn't enabled it on yet. When Nvidia GPUs first started supporting rebar, there were a lot of games that were not qualified to use it but did benefit from it. But it's been a while since NVIDIA started supporting rebar, and in that time, I think NVIDIA has done a pretty good job of qualifying games. Now with AMD on the other hand, there is no on or off. The way AMD is going about enabling smart access memory is simply on or off on all games based on whether or not it's enabled on your system. This may be good or bad, but on one hand, you don't have to worry about it turning it on or whether it's enabled on your specific games, but you could be losing performance by having it enabled on older games. But as you can see from the testing that I did, you're not losing that much. In fact, all of the games that did lose performance with rebar enabled were 
honestly within margin of error. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Ultimately, we did see a pretty good boost in performance to some of the games that were qualified to have rebar enabled. So it's definitely worth enabling it. And for games that don't support it, I wouldn't even worry about it. But like I said, more than anything else, this video has taught us that keeping your drivers and games up to date is pretty important. If you'd like to see the original video I did showing the benefits of updating your NVIDIA drivers, then I'll go ahead and put that video right here so you can check it out. And while you're watching it, make sure to make note of the performance we get in that video compared to this video. I think that the difference right there is the most impressive to me. Anyway, as always, you guys have a great day.